The anime begins with a small child Reiko, praying to the great evil dragon, Revandia and requests forgiveness for disturbing his sleep. She begs him to lend his strength and help mankind defeat the demon lord. In return, she offers him her life and requests him to devour her. But the dragon becomes very nervous and tries to calm her down, and then asks why he will have interest in eating her. The little girl questions him if she is not his liking, to which he denies that this is not a liking issue. He then explains to her that he is a herbivore and doesn't consume meat. She still insists on him by saying she is confident about her meat quality and that he should have a bite. The dragon then scolds her saying that she will die if he eats her, to which she becomes sad and says that it is okay if she dies, as she is prepared for it, and also it will be her honor to be eaten by the great evil dragon. He then again tries to explain to her that neither is he evil nor a carnivore. He shows her some plants and fruits nearby and tells her he prefers to eat them. She then lays on the leaves and the fruits arranged near her. She requests him to dig in, to which he gets scared. Then she adds that his powers exceed the demon lord, and is the only who can save the humans. So she is willing to sacrifice her life for their sake. The dragon now cries thinking when did the outer world started to pass down this nonsense. The dragon then recalls how he has lived for 5000 years. Yet he has very little courage and he isn't any demon lord's general. He has never ever harmed any human or animal. He then tells the little girl to go home, as her parents would be worried about her. To which she replied that she doesn't have any, as both of her parents are dead. She then adds that the villagers have sent her as an offering to him. See they will kill her if she returns back. Now she pulls out her knife and says that if he will not eat her, then she will offer her soul instead. The dragon requests her to put her knife away and thinks of a plan to calm her. He then senses a trace of magical power inside her and believes she could become a reservist wizard. The dragon cannot stand by and let her kill herself. So he thinks of a plan and tells her that he has already devoured her soul. Because high-ranking dragons can devour soul without killing. The dragon tells her not to worry, as he will explain the whole situation to the villagers. The little girl claims that now her soul has been eaten by the evil dragon, so she is now his disciple. But he ignores her and tells her to get on his back as he will bring her to the village. On his way to the village all the animals get scared by him. To which he is shocked as he has never caused anybody trouble in the village. He wishes that the village will provide him a warm welcome. But when he reaches all of them are scared by him, and ready with their weapons. The dragon tries to stay calm and to not show the villagers what a loser he is. The village head then greets him and inquires the purpose of his visit. The dragon in a very scary tone questions him if he sent him the offering. The dragon then explains that the girl may still be alive, and how he has already devoured her soul and also warns him not to bring any more sacrifices. The dragon then tries to ensure the girl's safety. So he tells them to treat her well and he will help them take over the demon lord. Suddenly somebody threw a rock at the dragon to which he started screaming. But everyone was looking at him so he changed it into a giant roar. A small boy Liade then comes up and scolds the dragon for eating Lingzi's soul, and is about to hit him with a stick. The dragon thinks he is now done for when the villagers stop him. Lingzi then threatens him not to be rude again to the evil dragon, as will kill her without turning a hair. Liade then tells the truth that the lot chosen for the sacrifice actually had his name. But because he was the next heir, Lingzi was chosen instead. Liade tells the villagers that if they have to sacrifice an innocent girl to save them, then this village deserves to be perished. Meanwhile from the other side some monsters started approaching the village. It was the dark wolves and in no time they surrounded the evil dragon. He becomes really scared and is on the verge of crying. When Lingzi lands on his back and tells him that she is at her limit, she pulls out her knife and goes on to fight the dragon alone. As she believes they are not worthy enough to be a fight for the evil dragon, she then uses her magical power and starts killing the wolves. Then the dragon realizes she is not an ordinary wizard but a really powerful one. She finishes them all, believing it is the power of the evil dragon with her deadly attack giant claw of the dragon. Lingzi then thanks him for lending her what she believes is 10 millionth of the dragon's power. He gets really confused because he knows nothing about the giant claw of dragon, and also thinks this little girl is scarier than the dark wolves. After defeating the dark wolves the villagers throw a party for the the evil dragon, and perform a dance for him. The dragon then demands to have the talk with the old man's son. Hearing which the old man gets scared and requests him to not scold Liade. The dragon assures that he will only have a light chat with him. Liade cared about her so he decides to tell him the truth. But he refuses to believe the dragon and says that he is making this shit up. So he can save himself from the battle with the demon lord. Lingzi then pulls out her knife to kill him. But the dragon stops him and says that weren't they close to each other at past. She explains to him that Liade always used to sneak her out of the village and give her clothes. 
so no one couldn't find her, but she used to come back every time and he was punished severely for that. She believes that he wanted to take her opportunity to be a sacrifice for the evil dragon. She then wears the clothes made by Lai Aode. They have the eastern witchcraft bestowed and gets on the back of the dragon, and asks him to fly to the demon lord, so they can defeat him. But he then remembers that he doesn't know how to fly. But Lingzi then makes a new spell the wings of darkness, after which the dragon starts to fly and they are now headed to fight the demon lord. Now the dragon tries to think of a way to calm her. So he tells her that they should find some fighters first, and make a team and then attack the demon lord. They reach a nearby city, Paleo Donaire, which was under attack by some monsters and was burning. The monsters saw the dragon and tried to attack him, but Lingzi then used her new power and destroyed all the monsters. The dragon then landed in front of the soldiers and they recognize him as the dragon lord, Revandia. The general then appears and introduces herself as Ileanti, the leader of Paleo Donaire. She then requests their help to save the city. Lingzi then claims that the evil dragon is now on his way to defeat the demon lord, and he can destroy the whole city if he wants in an instant. The dragon then orders Lingzi to help them destroy the aerial monsters. Lingzi then grows wings on the back through her powers and starts killing the monsters. The dragon then advises the general that there must be a general, who is manipulating the corpses and controlling them from a high place, so he can easily monitor them. The general takes on his advice, and orders her man to attack the tower and kill the monster controlling them. Lingzi then comes back and the dragon tells her to rest for a while, to which she denies but later he orders her. It is now raining and Lingzi is sleeping beside the dragon. She is having a bad dream as the rain drops fall on her. So the dragon uses his wings as cover and she sleeps peacefully. Ilanati returns and thanks the dragon for his advice as they have won the battle. She then orders her men to not stand here and rather they should make themselves useful. All her men are now gone, and the dragon and the general have a talk. He then tells the truth to her that Lingxi is not his disciple, and that the power she holds is her own. So she should stay in this town and become a great wizard. The general questions him. Why is he going against the demon lord and what is his motive behind this? The dragon then explains all his story that he is not a part of the demon king's army, and how he is just a vegan loser dragon. The general refuses to believe his story and once again questions him why he is betraying the demon lord. She then pulls out her sword and introduces herself as the Ileanti, loyal swordsman to the demon lord, and attacks the dragon for going against her majesty. Lingxi then wakes up and joins the fight, but she isn't able to keep up with Ilanti, as she has greater combat ability. Also Lingxi cannot use her magic power, as she used most of it in her fight earlier against the monster birds. Ilanati blocks all her attacks as she could predict all of them and then she starts to attack her. She slashes her sword toward Lingxi but she escapes by making a jump. Then Ilanandi gets behind her. In the air Lingxi couldn't get her foothold and could no longer react to her attack. Ilianti attacks her with her sword and Lingzi lands on the floor losing her consciousness. Ilianti now continues her fight with the evil dragon. She attacks him with her sword, to which he screams in pain. But he then sees that there is no damage done. Ilianti then shows him her special sword, which doesn't cut but inflict damage on the one it is used. She then repeatedly attacks the dragon, and after a while he is on the ground lost and exhausted. She then tells him the truth that she was just testing, if he was telling the truth earlier, and she is no swordsman of the demon lord. The dragon feels really relaxed, but also is angry for the mental torture he had to go through in this fight. Ileanti suggests to him to keep it a secret that he is weak, and if the world knows about it, they might come after him. Also she tells him to explain his whole fight as a dream to Lingxi as she looks up to him. The next morning when Lingxi wakes she is scared to see the dragon shrinked in size. Last night Alanati gave him a medicine, so he could be of a more compatible size. He gives her an absurd reason for his shrinkage that to prevent cervical spondylosis he has shrunk in size, but she believes in whatever he says, and they both now continue their journey in a forest. While on their way Lingxi is still confused about her dream, and believes it to be too realistic to be a dream. Meanwhile Lyade reaches Paleo Donaire and is in search of the evil dragon. Suddenly a large brick is about to fall on him, when Ileani comes to his safety. He was really impressed by her skills and requests her to become his master. She then starts the training. But she gives him a really tough training and he almost loses his mind at it. Dragon and Lingxi now are taking a rest under a tree. When a group of bandits discover and try to attack them, they decide to sell Lingxi for a high price and a talking dragon will make them really rich. Lingxi asks dragon for permission to kill them, but he refuses saying killing should be avoided wherever possible. The bandits then try to threaten Lingxi, but Dragon this time gives her permission to use a tiny bit of her power, 
Ling Sui then touches the head bandit and he falls back some distance away. The bandits surrender and take Ling Su and Dragon to their cave, where they have held many people captive. After reaching there all the captives are released, and Dragon sends Ling Sui to deliver the bandits to the nearby prison, where they can turn themselves in. After Ling Si leaves, Dragon enters a strange cave to find food for him, his favorite mosses, but then falls in a tunnel there. He is now underground, where he meets a strange ghost. The dragon gets really scared and starts calling Lingzi for help. The ghost tries to approach him, but he starts to run away, to which the ghost tells him don't run. But he doesn't listen to him and continues running until he stomps on a tarp, which shoots arrows at him but luckily he survives. The ghost then comes up to him and says don't run as there are traps nearby. The ghost gives him food and asks about a strange power, which was present earlier above and says that it isn't human. The dragon now asks him about his identity to which he shows him some wall drawings. The ghost is actually the god of hunting, and long long years back he descended upon this land to teach humanity hunting, and how to provide for themselves, but later when the people mastered hunting, he was forgotten. However he wants to go out and teach hunting, but there is no one whom he can teach now. The dragon now feels bad for him and decides to be his student. They are now outside, and the god of hunting is really excited about the training. He claims that he will make the dragon an excellent hunter in three hours. The dragon that many people have tried to teach him many things in the past few years. But he is a loser student. The god of hunting tells him that there is nothing such as a bad disciple. Only a bad master. The first part of training is physical training. So the dragon now has to do 200 sit-ups. The dragon lays on the ground and tries to do sit-ups. But is unable due to the spikes on his back. The next training is balancing. So now the dragon has to walk on a log and cross to the other side. But the log is made for humans to practice. So when the dragon tries to walk on it, the log breaks and he falls down. He does this over and over again. But fails. Next he fails the archery training, pull-ups, making traps and even actual combat training. At last the god of hunting uses his trump card and dodges the obstacles. Explosives are attached on the ends of the string, which will explode if touched. So he has to cross the strings and get out of it. But suddenly he starts growing back into his original size, as the effects of the medicine are now over. The bombs explode and the training fails again. The god of hunting is now crying in the corner, because it is the first time he failed at training someone to hunt, and 8 hours have already passed. However he doesn't give up, as he can't accept the fact that he couldn't give any teaching to his student. The god of hunting then asks him to extend his claws and gives the dragon some dark magical powers. Now he tells the dragon to avoid mentioning him to others in future, and then disappears. The dragon then lays down and sleeps. When in the morning he wakes up, he sees Lingzi in front of him and is very happy to see her. Lingzi tells Dragon about a city Suleiman she found while returning back. So she suggests that evil Dragon should capture that land and rule over it. But he denies and they are now on their way to enter the city. Just then a magic barrier stops them. The barrier is controlled by the water saint and she starts talking to them. She recognizes him as the evil Dragon and threatens him not to enter the city. Meanwhile Lingzi fuses her magic with the water and grabs the water saint. So she escapes leaving the barrier open. They both then enter the city and the dragon decides to disguise as a circus dragon. Which Lingzi denies to do at first but later dragon orders her to. The people are now comfortable about them being in the city. And as they all leave. Someone starts to tell them about the history of Suleiman. It used to be a desert earlier. When the water saint arrived and provided water. After which people started living here. They both take a room in a hotel, and Dragon leaves Lingzi in the room telling her to learn patience. Dragon goes out to find the saint and clears the misunderstanding. The saint is now hiding in the whole city fearing the dragon, but he is able to find her every time. After a lot of hide and seek the dragon decides to rest, then some kids come to him and offer him an apple. The saint sees this and believes he is about to eat the kids, so she gets out and demands a one-on-one -on -one fight, but he requests her to just help him to reach back his hotel, and he doesn't intend to fight. Now she agrees and also tries to hide her identity saying is not the saint. But the dragon clearly saw through her, and requests her to tell the saint to reinstate the barrier. The saint brings the dragon to his hotel, and requests him to leave the city early in the morning. But he wanted to stay in the city for some days. He opens his room and sees Lingzi with a serious face, trying to be the patient which the dragon told her to be. They both now are about to sleep so he then sleeps on the floor. Because the human bed doesn't suit him. But Lingzi also sleeps with him. At night a shiny armored dragon is seen in the sky above the barrier. Planning to attack the city tomorrow by breaking the barrier with his ghost-like friend. Later in the morning the saint pays them a visit as a service girl and enters their room. 
Ling Si strikes her down on the floor and some of her water splashes. She then gets up and says that the weather is fine today, so they should leave at any moment now. She then shows the food provided to them, which is children's veggie leftovers from the garbage. Now Ling Zi gets angry and again strikes her down on the food tray and all the food gets wasted. The saint runs away, but the dragon is now angry at Ling Zi for wasting food, so he tries to discipline her not to use her power for no reason. He orders only to use powers when he commands or in self-defense. The dragon then suggests Ling Zi to play with the children in the city. She first denies but later agrees to play with them. The dragon then goes out to talk with the saint and clear the misunderstanding, but when he walks out of his room, he starts drowning in the water outside his room. He drowns inside where the saint takes him deep into the water, so she can finish him and also giving up her own life while doing so. Meanwhile Ling Zi finds the other children. They all decide to search for the dragon, who plays with children. Suddenly the armored dragon attacks the city. Now Ling Zi thinks that it is the dragon who plays with children, so she calls him to play with her. So on one side dragon is deep inside the water with the saint, where he cannot even surrender, because he cannot talk underwater. On the other hand Ling Zi is unknowingly going to be involved in a fight with the armored dragon. After this the episode ends. Like this video, subscribe to any summary and set the notification on all for more anime recaps.